we now look at energy and energies are uh, like basically in physics we have only two kinds of energies even though we may think that petroleum has energy and solar energy or wind energy or electrical energy or heat energy thermal energy but ultimately in physics we only have two kinds of energies one is called the potential energy and the other is called the kinetic energy and all kinds of energies would be either of these two now I'll just write the equations here and then we'll see what they mean the kinetic energy is due to the motion of the object that's why it's kinetic and it's equal to half m v square m is the mass of the object and v is its velocity so if you have any any object that's moving with the velocity v has a mass m that would be its kinetic energy the potential energy uh, cannot be represented by just one equation because that depends on the configuration of the system or how the the, the location of that system so we'll see that in in somewhat detail uh, after we see what is kinetic energy so the kinetic energy is uh, due to motion and that comes from its name or that the name comes from there and it's half mv square we write it as we can write it as ke is kinetic energy the mass is kilograms and the speed is meters per second square so we can rewrite that as kilograms one of the meters over second square and the other meter is here so this becomes m this becomes acceleration so this becomes force so that becomes newton meter which is a joule so the unit of uh, of kinetic energy is the joule uh, the unit the joule is also the unit of potential energy it is also the unit of work so work potential energy and kinetic energy all have the same units and in fact they are much very closely related to each other and they can interconvert from one to the other so potential energy can convert into kinetic energy and kinetic energy can convert into potential energy or it can convert into work now let's see what would happen if you have on a surface you have an object and let's say there's no friction and you apply a force F and initially it could have had a zero velocity or it may have had some velocity as you apply a force let's assume it's V zero when you apply a force it's going to start moving and it will have some velocity so here the kinetic energy was zero because V is zero and here it would have some kinetic energy so the force has an effect of changing its kinetic energy well if the distance from here to here is delta X F times delta X is the work done so the force is doing some work and the kinetic energy is increasing so there, there is a relationship between the work that it does the force does and the increase in its kinetic energy uh, we can look at this in different ways we can find this relationship in different ways so if we look at this equation that we did last time vf square equals vi square plus 2a delta x that's uh, the, one of the equations of motion for one dimensional motion and we rearrange this as vf square minus vi square equals 2a delta x bringing it here and then we multiply by m by 2 so we multiply the equation by m and we divide it by 2 and that means we multiply every term by this factor so multiplying it here becomes half m v f square and multiplying here becomes half m v initial square and multiplying here becomes half times 2 m times a okay we bring the m a little later 
times delta x. Now this is the final kinetic energy and this is the initial kinetic energy. So if it moved from here to here, this would be the final kinetic energy and that's the initial kinetic energy. The two will cancel. Ma is a force and that's the displacement. So that's the work done. So it means that work goes into increasing the kinetic energy from initial to that final value or the delta Ke equals work. So whenever you do work on an object, you increase its kinetic energy by this amount. Well, uh, not always. Here we have ignored the effect of any friction and we have ignored whether if it's going up or down. So this is called the work kinetic energy theorem. Kinetic energy theorem. And it's used to find how the kinetic energy would change if you do some work. But it's rather a restricted theorem in that it applies only if there is no friction and no change in the elevation of that object. So it's not going up or down. And we could say it's not changing its configuration. The arrangement of the molecules or the system is also not changing. In the next chapter, we will see a much more general relationship that would uh, be more useful than this work kinetic energy theorem. Now, we look at uh, potential energy. And potential energy is due to uh, the position of that object or due to configuration. So we look at a few different uh, cases. For example, uh, if we consider gasoline, which has, if it burns, it produces a lot of energy. So if you have gasoline or you have methane, which is natural gas, they can burn and give us a lot of energy, also coal. So if we consider methane, it's CH4, and when oxygen combines with it, we get CO2 plus H2O. Well, to balance the equation, I think we need to have four here, so two here. Um, that's four oxygen, so a two over here. Uh, balance this equation. Now, the energy stored in this molecular structure and this molecular structure has some amount, some value, but the energy stored in in these molecular structures is less than what you have here. So these have more energy stored in them. These have less energy stored in them, and that difference has to come out as heat and that's why uh, when you burn methane you get a lot of heat and you get CO2 and H2O. So we say that methane has potential energy. When it burns this becomes <coughs> heat and that's really the because of the m fast motion of the CO2 and H2O molecules so that's basically kinetic energy. So the potential energy of the molecule, molecular structure or arrangement of, of atoms in the molecules is converted into kinetic energy. Now, um, as we saw here, that when we do some work, it can go into its kinetic energy. Similarly, work can go into potential energy. And we'll see a, a little. Uh, we have a, in the lab what we call the projectile launcher. It's a tube in which we have a spring. Let's say the spring comes up to here. We we take a, a a rod and we push it in so that the spring is pushed and squeezed up to here. And then there's a little device that locks it in here. So by pushing it in here 
and then we take that rod out the spring is locked in place and then we take a, a metal or a plastic ball and put it in here and then we pull this trigger and the spring throws it out so what we've done here is we've applied a force to the left and we move the spring from here to here so we have so this this force has done some work on the spring equals well it's the integral of fdx because the force is changing as it goes along that work is then locked in here and when you pull the trigger it that work that was stored inside here pushes the spring out we say that this work by this agent was converted into the potential energy of the spring and then when the trigger was released that potential energy converted into the kinetic energy of the ball so this force created work which went into potential energy which then converted into kinetic energy of the ball so energy converts from one form to another and we say energy is never destroyed nor created it's just converted from one form to another well where did that force or work come from well it came if you were pushing it it came from the food that you had eaten that food converts into energy and that energy gives you the capability of pushing it and it comes out over here <coughs> now this uh, would give us um, if this is zero position that's the equilibrium position that's the delta x the work done would be half k x square k is the spring constant now we'll come back to this later but let's look at what we call the gravitational potential energy so this is uh, because of the position of an object in the earth's gravitational field in a way it's uh, also a configuration because the surface of the earth is or the earth is one object and if you have any mass that's another object and they are uh, let's say that's the earth and you have an object here when you raise it up you're changing the configuration of the earth and that system so if this is your surface and you have an object sitting here of mass m and you want to raise it up so this is the y-axis and this is y equal to zero uh, its mass is m so in order to lift it up and slowly so we're not converting it into much kinetic energy we're just raising it up very very slowly so the force that we need to apply upwards must be equal to its weight which is mg so the force will be equal to its weight or you can see just a tiniest bit bigger than that and it's going to start moving upwards and it you raise it up to here by this time the work that you do is f times the delta y f is in the y direction delta y is in the y direction this is y final so, and the delta y would be final minus initial so you do so much work in raising it up now uh, this would then be m g times the delta y that would be the work done by this force and as the force is still holding it here and this object is stationary this object now has absorbed that work and this becomes equal to the potential energy of the mass m <coughs> so the work becomes the potential energy because there was no increase in kinetic energy just done very very slowly so v was almost zero all the time well you can say it stopped at that point so um, we can say that uh, the potential energy here is zero and the potential energy here is m g times y f but can we really say the p e potential energy is zero here and that is something that uh, may not be true or is not true 
because let's assume that you're on uh, like here's the ground and you, we have a building here and that's the first floor that's the second floor and you you are on the second floor and here's a table and you have something this mass M is sitting on the table so what is its potential energy well you could say that the this is y equal to zero the potential potential energy here is zero and so this is a little value of y and so that's the potential energy here but somebody could say no that this is y equal to zero and the potential energy here is zero and you already had so much potential energy when you went up to the second floor so the potential energy here is much much more than what you would consider if you take this as y equal to zero because this is y equal to zero but then somebody else may even be on the third floor and say no this is y equal to zero because he measures everything from here and the potential energy according to him at that point would be negative or you could go outside the building and you have the parking lot which is a little bit lower or you have the road which is even lower or you could go out all the way to sea level and say okay the sea level is y equal to zero and then all potential energies are measured from here well the thing here is that uh, you can set y equal to zero wherever you wish you can take this as y equal to zero and when thing, something moves upwards it gains potential energy when it goes downwards it loses potential energy or it becomes negative and there's no problem with that we will always be dealing with the change in the potential energy rather than its absolute value so if if you raise an object from here to here it gains this much potential energy it doesn't matter whether the y was zero here or zero here or here the change the delta is always the same now um, we will use a notation for potential energy as a u so that is the potential energy so for gravitational potential energy we'll call it ug for the spring we'll call it us this is potential energy of uh, uh, gravitational okay so the gravitational potential energy or the delta ug would be m g by final minus m g y initial now here we have a small question if i raise it from here to here i gain some potential energy but what if i initially it was here and it went this way or it was here and went this way so would the change in potential energy be the same or different so if it goes like that it covers a much bigger distance but the equation has only the y so this is the y initial this is the y final and whether it goes at an angle or goes straight up makes no difference the change in potential energy will be the same or the if you consider the pre e to be zero here the value here would be the same irrespective of how you got here and this is because gravitation is what we call a conservative force and in a conservative force it does not matter how you go from point a to point b only the point a and point b matter how you get there does not matter in non-conservative forces it does matter how you go there and an example of non-conservative force is friction so if you go from here to here you would have to overcome a certain amount of friction but if you took a longer path you would have to overcome much more friction because you're rubbing against the floor all along this bigger distance but the in a conservative force 
it would not matter whether you went like that or you went like this. Uh, we'll see that uh, again later. Uh, but let's see that in this example. Suppose you have a truck. Here's the ground and here's your truck. And you have a ramp and you have a an object that you push up the ramp and comes here and you would do a certain amount of work in pushing it up here and it would gain a certain amount of potential energy so what if instead of the ramp you just held that object here and raised it straight up and put it here so how would the two compare well if we consider this to be um, let's take some numbers say this is one meter and this let's say along the incline is two meters this angle is 30 degrees and the mass of this object is let's say 10 kilograms so <coughs> what is the world done in taking it straight up Well, it's going to be uh, the force that you would have to apply is going to be equal to its weight times the delta y which is this height so the force is going to be m g and times the delta y then we 10 times 9.8 times 1 meter so it's 98 joules now if you take it up the ramp That's mg, and this is mg sine theta. So this is the force pushing down, so you have to push upwards with the force that's equal to mg sine theta. You don't have to apply a force of 10 times 9.8 to push it up. You have to apply a force that's m 10 times 9.8 times sine theta. And sine theta in this case is 0.5. And so um, work done by moving it up the ramp would be mg sine theta that's going to be the force times the distance and the distance is much more that's l so this is going to be 10 times 9.8 times 0.5 and l is 2 because it's 30 degrees and so uh, the result is 98 joules so it comes out to be exactly the same. So the work done is the same this way and this way. Then what's the advantage of using a ramp? Well, the advantage is that you need to apply a much smaller force equal to this value. So that will be uh, 98 by 2, so that's 49 uh, uh, newtons would be the 